I'm Rika Brown, the natural gardener. I'd like to build a huge garden, a five acre garden that will grow a huge variety of fruits and vegetables and herbs. And I can't do it in this area. A you pick farm is a farm where people go and pick their veg vegetables and fruits and pay a low price because they're doing the picking labor. And this is why I think it would be perfect for my retirement farm because when I build a garden, I build it permanently. It doesn't have to be tilled up every year and replanted. It only, ha only the annuals have to be replanted every year, but uh, the, ma the maintenance on a natural garden is very low because we don't expose the soil. We don't have a lot of weeds. We keep them down with mulches. And so this would make a great retirement farm because the maintenance is low. Yeah, I can easily uh, replant each year for the annuals and the people will come in and pick the vegetables for me. And I, in return, they'll get those vegetables for about half the price that they'd pay in a supermarket. And they'll go to a beautiful, beautiful garden to pick their veggies and they'll have a wide variety because I'll be growing the widest possible variety of fruits and vegetables in order to spread the cash flow over the entire growing season. But in, in this state, we have restricted the supply of the size of pieces that I want to work on, the, the size of piece I want to buy, five to ten acres. We've restricted that supply in trying to save big farms, trying to keep big pieces of land together for farming. And yet, it's what it's doing is stopping new farms from being built and stopping small farms from being built. We're not getting little five and ten acre you pick farms that can grow lots of vegetables and fruits and herbs. Oregon has funny land use laws. In order to start a new farm or even to build a house anywhere in what is considered a farm area, you have to have 80 acres and you have to make $80,000 a year in farm income before you can get a building permit. Now, I can't do this. I'm not a rich person. In any other state, I could go about five or 10 miles from town and five, find a five or 10 acre parcel at a decent price and put my little trailer on there and build my farm and build my house and have no problem. But in this state, I have to build the farm and get good money off it before I can build the house. And in my circumstances, that is not possible. I have to live on the property in order to build the farm. Most of the people who start new farms are poor and middle class. And they can't afford to buy a piece and not live on it while they build it. This is how farms get built in most places. People move out, they take a piece of land, they build a house, then they build their farm. In this state, you got it backward. We have to go out and build our farm before we can build our house. Now, I would really like to be able to start a farm here, retire here and start my U-Pick farm and provide vegetables and fruits and herbs for people who want to come out and pick them. But I'm afraid I can't do it in this state. I'm afraid I'm going to have to leave Grants Pass and go to another state like Idaho or Washington and find my, uh, restart my business and find a piece of land there unless the land use laws in this state change. I'm 70 years old. I've lived here for pretty near, and this summer it'll be 49 years. Uh, farmed this ranch all my life. My brother and I own it 50-50. We 
bought it in August of 59. It's getting harder and harder with these new regulations coming down the pike. You have your EPA that wants to, with this new Senate bill, wants to impose a dust regulation. When you plow, disc, harrow, or combine a field, and dust flies out when you're farming. If you're going to be a farmer, you have to farm, and under these confusing regulations is what I'll put it. It's getting tougher every year. Some of your new regulations coming down the pike on uh, your chemicals you apply. EPA come out with this new one. They want to keep tabs on every gallon or quart of chemical you have in your shop, warehouse, garage, or whatever. They want to try to put a cow tag for the methane expulsion. I call it the burp and fart tax because when a cow chews their cud they belch which belches out methane and when they fart that's another methane release. The, the gas expulsion tax on dairy cows and beef cows Gonna run right at $150 to $170 to five dollars per head. That's got to be passed on the consumer. This new animal identification system. The cost for the identification system would probably be anywhere from $50 to $100 a head. They want you to fence off little cricks like this. There's one over here behind me, and uh, this main irrigation ditch down here, uh, fencing off livestock. And on this ranch, if you took in all the little ditches and creeks that run through the property, not only the land you would lose to pasture or other production, it would cost us thousands of dollars to do that. So if you had to fence off all these cricks on the ranch, you take this one right here, you'd have to start at that fence and go across the creek, go 25 to 50 feet up that hill, and you'd lose that much production of hay ground or pasture, whichever we've used it for both, and then the main irrigation ditch, we'd have to fence that on both sides. And we'd lose quite a bit of ground because we'd have to fence it off wide enough to get equipment along there to clean the canal. And uh, other creeks up on the hill, we would lose a lot of acreage up there. I mean, uh, we'd lose almost a third of uh, 32 acres to fence it off and do what the government want us to. This is supposed to be our land, private property, and yet the government comes in and tries to tell us how to farm it. The government supported reason for fencing off the creeks they don't want the cows to poop in the creeks, along the creeks, and whatever. Well, what's the government going to do about their creeks up in the woods and uh, the hills? All the elk, the deer, the bear, the coon, the muskrat, the coyotes. Are they going to fence all of them animals away from the creeks? I mean, what's good for the goose is good for the gander. I don't believe in any of this bureaucracy. 
the farmer, the rancher, the landowner, I don't care how big or small you are, is going to be regulated to death. When Senate Bill 100 was made law of the land, our intent, and I was a supporter of Senate Bill 100, that we would protect our resource lands, forestry, farmland, mining, and other resource lands. If you go to a county planning department, you don't find planners that are educated in agriculture, timber, and mining. You find people that are educated in the basics of land use. They may not have ever even grown a tomato plant or saw a log in the forest or cut a tree down or any of those kind of activities that many of us in Oregon know well. So we're regulated and controlled by people that have no background in the industries and skills that we know something about. So when I stand there and listen to the discussion of agriculture, I really know something about it. I mean, I know that equipment, that machinery, some of the things to do with soil, water, what it actually takes to grow something, what it takes to put cows or sheep on a field. But when I listen to our county and state officials, they make it real clear to a person like me, they don't know much about it, but they want to be in charge of it. Even though I started out being a person that really supported our land use laws, I ended up being a person that really started listening to the 37 and 49 claimants because they were going through the same things that I spent 30 plus years going through. And so that made us kind of odd comrades here uh, at this point, that I ended up being in the same group as people that I had opposed in the beginning.